everybody. Well, it's the start of our show. Now, my first guest is an actor, and he's actually a comic legend here in Boston. Please welcome Lenny Clark. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here. I am, you know, I'm so glad. I did a show like this once. My batteries died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this now, come fantastic. on. This is like deja vu all over again. <laughs> I'm telling you what, this, I'm so excited. This is an international show. I've done a lot of network shows, but this is international. Throughout the world, we're going tonight. Yeah. Are we in Bucharest? Uh, <laughs> yes, we are. We're in Bucharest, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is you. You are half the man you used to be. I, I am. I'm exactly half the man that I used to be. I, 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 I attribute that to Weight Watchers. Wow. Yeah. Now, how, how much weight did you lose? 190 pounds. 190 oh. pounds! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's so nice. Uh, but it was my own fault. I let myself turn into a big, fat, bloated piece of... Wow, well, you can't say that in Bucharest. But <laughs> uh, I, was, I, I, I really blew up there. I was, uh, I was 388 pounds... Or the size 56 inch waist. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was. And a lot of people said, well, did you go and have that thing done where, you know, uh, no, I actually went to the doctors for that operation, gastric something. I don't know. Bypass. I went, yeah. There you go. Yeah. And my, okay. my, uh, my doctor said, wow, Lenny, you fat. And I go, yeah, that's why I'm here. I want you to do the operation where you gut me like a fish and then sew me back up and I eat like a grape or a pea a day and uh, then I'm, you know, I can wear human clothes again. He says, no, you're too fat for me to do that. I said, what is it? You're going to lose 70 pounds. I said, if I can lose 70 pounds, I don't need you. You. So I was really <laughs> mad. I lost the weight. I started going to Weight Watchers, and I was the only guy there with a bunch of gals. And it worked out. It mm -hmm. really did. It's uh, you know since then uh, you know I can see parts of me I haven't seen in years. <laughs> <laughs> now. I think this is catching on with other comedians because the more people I meet, a lot of them are doing Weight Watchers. Is that because of you? I don't know. My, my good buddy Jack Walsh, who's been on your show, mm -hmm. Jack's lost almost 100 pounds. Wow. And a couple other comedians I know have done it. My dentist has done it. He's lost 40 pounds. Uh, you, you know, I mean, I, you just get to the point where, you know, you, you, you're sick of it. You know, yeah. I mean, I, and it, 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 it's so much easier to, to run from the police. Uh, <laughs> and for me, if, you know, if I go back to court and go, that's him, Your Honor. They're, they're, no, I don't think that's him. He was a big, fat, sweaty guy. You know? <laughs> Let's talk about your new show that's on NBC. It's called Are You There, Chelsea? Have you seen this, everybody? His new show? Yeah. Look, oh, oh, almost, almost, almost a third of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> we're, waiting, we're waiting to see if we get picked up. We did the first season. Mm -hmm. And working with Chelsea Handler is, is a real hoot. I mean, mm -hmm. she's a... She's a uh, crazy gal. Uh, and the woman who plays her, Laura Prepon, from you'll know her from the 70s show. Laura, she's amazing. I just really love her. The entire cast is great. It's on NBC. Unfortunately, we're up against American Idol and uh, Survivor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it's the two top sh 10 shows in the country. So we're waiting to hear. We'll know in a couple of weeks. But if I get picked up, I'm coming back to the Catso show. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Opa. Uh, Opa. We have to talk about the Red Sox because oh. uh, my day job is that I work in sports TV for Fox and for MLB Network. And whenever I'm at Fenway, I always see you walking on the field with good friend Dave David Meller, Meller. Oh who God. is the groundskeeper there at the Red Sox. And he, he wrote a lot of books and he's been on our show. Right. He's an author. Yeah. And uh, you guys are buddy-buddy, aren't you? Yes. One of the few authors I have as a friend wrote about grass. The kind you grow, <laughs> not the kind you smoke. <laughs> uh, but Dave's co-authored uh, 13 books. He's written f uh, five on his own. He's got a new one coming up. I was at uh, Fenway Park right after John Henry and the, the new group, uh, Tom Warner, who's my executive producer on the, the Chelsea show, mm -hmm. and Larry Lakino bought the uh, park, and uh, it was my birthday. He said, would you like to come sit with us? And I said, yes. Yeah. So we went down in the new seats, and he turned to me and says, well, it's your birthday. If you can meet anyone in your organization, who would you want to meet? And I go, the groundskeeper. And they go, are you kidding me? And I go, no. He goes, you don't want to meet Manny or Big Poppy? I go, no. I, the ground, look at the lawn. I said, <laughs> I said, this is amazing. I said, you know, they had Jimmy Buffett there twice that week, and there wasn't a blade of grass out of it. I said, this guy's got to be a genius. <laughs> and he's the, you know, he's the god of sod. And I met him, and I, I had him and his family come down to my house for a week. My lawn. 
lawn looked amazing. <laughs> but but, you, but uh, anyone who knows anything about lawn, you got to do it all the time. And I get bored. I get ADT. I'm done. Yeah. So now, now I just hope for the best. You know, water. Yay. <laughs> uh, one of uh, my favorite movies and my wife's favorite movies is Something About Mary. Oh. Now, you were in this uh, scene, which was crazy, where uh, the lead character got stuck in his zipper. Yes. And you showed up, and you were uh, the fireman. Well, it's a funny you should ask me that, because when I got the role, I was the cop. But when I showed up in Miami to shoot that, I was so fat, I couldn't get my ass through the window. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. I, I was you know, about 380 at the time. And Steve Sweeney was the fireman, so the Farrelly brothers, who I love, they said, why don't we switch places? You be the cop and you be the fireman. So then I went to wardrobe. They had to chop up three fireman suits to get me to fit in this fireman oh suit. <laughs> and that particular scene is in the Comedy Hall of Fame for when he gets a cut in a zipper. Yeah. It's uh, very, very funny. It was fun to do. We, we, were, we were laughing so much when we first saw that. It was oh, fantastic. God. And I, I had, I mean, my wife and I watched the movie again the other day because we wanted to make sure we were refreshed with it. Oh, and yeah. you, and being a fireman, the funny thing is that you were in this web series about firemen. They went to your house. It was called Hosed. You know what? I had I had... had some sort of operation, like a double hernia operation or something, and I was heavily medicated when I shot this particular piece, this show that he's talking about, uh, for a good friend, Justin McKinney, up in New Hampshire. It's a, a volunteer firefighter show, and they come to my house to put out a fire that I've called in, and they're, they're morons, they're nitwits. And Dennis Leary called me when he started, he goes, that's the best acting you've ever done. I go, what the hell are you talking about? That, that fireman show, rescue me? He goes, no, you moron, the volunteer fireman show called Hose. I went, I never shot that. And he goes, <laughs> I was pretty hot. Yeah, so but next week, with it. All legal, legal, well, hopefully all Hopefully next week you'll remember this, Lenny. Uh, I'll never forget, you to forget the Steve Katzo show. <laughs> We're worldwide. <laughs> and it's Christina. You're the audience member of the day. <laughs> awesome. Uh, one thing I saw on cable recently, a great documentary from a while back. It was called When, uh, when Stand Up Stood Out. Oh. Talk and about, oh. there were some great stories there with you in the comics back in the 80s. But what I wanted to mention was you had said in the documentary that one night you did, what, eight shows? Nine. Nine, nine shows. Nine, nine shows. Nine full shows. You know, not just, I mean, uh, I started at Nick's Comedy Stop in Boston. Mm -hmm. I did a show there, and then I went over to Stitches and Com Ave in Brighton or Alston, whichever you prefer. And then I went to Play It Against Sam's, then uh, opened the second show, Play It Against Sam's. Stopped at uh, st uh, uh, Stitches, did a show there, went to Nick's, closed Nick's second show, opened the third show, went back to Stitches, then did the show I played against Sam's, went back and closed. Uh, I, yeah, it was nine. It was a mess. But I wasn't driving. Talk about being high. Uh, <laughs> but now, every, let me ask you, how, how much money did you make that night doing nine shows? You know, I, probably not enough to pay for everything I was doing yeah, uh. at the time. But, uh, you know, it, it, was a, it was a crazy, crazy time, and we all jumped out of the plane. Some of us just didn't pull the chute, you know. <laughs> uh, it, was, uh, it was the days when, when comedy was at its, its, its heyday. You know, mm -hmm. we had The Tonight Show coming in. We had people coming in, uh, movie people coming in to pick us up right out of the clubs and put us in films and TV, mm -hmm. although that didn't work for me. I, I finally Wait, had... Well, you're here now on international television, yeah, right, yeah, everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's working! And I couldn't be happier. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> can I ask you a question? Go ahead, Dad. Yes, Take the interview. You when you were at the, ex the class with the girls, right? Yes. And you lost 190 pounds. Yeah. What were you doing uh, with all those girls? I was, I was listening to them. You were listening? <laughs> I was. I, I, I got to tell you what. You know, uh, Weight Watchers is predominantly a, a women's group, but people, no one told me that. I went down there, and there was 56 women, 56 big women, 56 huge women. And they were all looking at me like they wanted to eat me. <laughs> and not in a sexual way. <laughs> and they, they were very nice to me, and they, they, they helped me, and they, they, but first they thought I was there to do research, to make a film, to make fun of Weight Watchers. I said, no, I'm fat, help me. <laughs> and they took me, and I was the only guy, and I would yeah. go, and I listened to them, and they told me how to eat and went to eat, what to eat, and uh, it worked out. And yeah. that's it? That's, that's it. it. Well, <laughs> later on, I started working out like an animal. But, hey, yeah, you can lose weight eating right quicker than you can. You can work out till the cows come home. But if you eat those cows when you come home, you're going to be a big fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, 
Now, speaking of working out, there was a feature on Chronicle here in Boston about you in this Boston Comedy Softball oh, League. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know, uh, we have a team. Well, it's a comedian softball league, and I had no idea there were so many comedians. We, uh, our team, our average age is like 53 years old, mm -hmm. so we're playing against these young kids. The first game I played last year, I pulled the muscle in my butt, mm -hmm. and I didn't even know I had muscles there, and it, it was tough. We, I think we won one game, but we had a lot of fun, and we had, you know, we had TV coverage, so that was always good. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you were uh, working with Jimmy Kimmel on his show, weren't you? I, I guest hosted the Jimmy Kimmel show about, oh my God, I did, there was one show that sticks out there. I was a guest host on Jimmy Kimmel's show for a week, three different weeks. It was when he used to have a guest host, mm -hmm. and I've done the show about, I guess, about 15 times, and, and Jimmy's terrific. Uh, he reminds me of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, he makes uh, a lot more money than I do, well, I'll tell you that. Much. Well, but he's not international. <laughs> uh, you gotta understand, at the time I was heavy, I was so fat, my wife said, you can have sex with other people. Uh, <laughs> so, Lauren Grant came on the show one night, and I, I love this story, she's just so hot and so terrific, and, and Jimmy said, well, do you want to give her a little something, like some jewelry? I said, no, I can't, I'm not happily married, my, my wife would kill me. He goes, well, what would you like to give her? I said, I'd love to give her a honey-baked ham. <laughs> so in between the dress rehearsal and the show, they went out and they got a honey baked ham. And when we were sitting on the couch, I said, Lenny's got something for you. And I pulled this honey baked ham and she just started peeling it. <laughs> it's very erotic if you look at it late at night alone. Uh, <laughs> I, I know that you've been on Jimmy Fallon's show. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's great now that you've got Jimmy and you've got Letterman. And, of course, before Jimmy was Conan and Letterman. So there's two shows coming out of New York. But I wanted to talk about the one show coming out of Boston. The Steve Cacho show. What do you know? <laughs> when I'm traveling around and I'm working with all these A-listers, they say, is there a show on the East Coast that we can do other than, other than Fallon or other than, uh, uh, who's the other guy? Letterman. Letterman, yeah. <laughs> and I, and, uh, you know, you never know with him. Uh, I, but I mean, I you're, you're a comic legend. Everyone uh, here knows you. You've been doing this for years. How come a show hasn't come out of Boston yet? Because, Steve, no one's had the foresight or the intuitiveness or the beautiful Greek of it all to come out. <laughs> and it's now the Steve Cacho Show. No, no. <laughs> well, listen, I got to say, yeah, listen, let me tell you this. If the president of the country, if President Obama used People like you do. I mean, you've got your entire family working. <laughs> you are single-handedly going to create and save all the problems in Greece by putting all those people out of work to work here at this Steve Cacho show. Fantastic. Well, you are a winner. Uh, if a winner's making no money, then yes, I'm a winner. Well, look at the tax benefits. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, my friend. Listen, I want to say thank you so much for coming. This is really an honor to have you here on this show. Thank you so much, ladies Yay. and gentlemen. Bye. 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 Bye.